Right. Good to see you again. <laughs> Good to see you again. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, now remember that um, as individuals, okay, um, as natural human beings, or you know, as uh, registered entities, right? Um, that's artificial human beings, I guess. But whichever way, as individuals or as um, entities, you know, aside from the fact that um, we are involved in, you know, a particular type of business or a particular type of activity, okay, sometimes it is very possible based on opportunities, you know, presenting itself for us to, you know, enter into you know, a temporal business arrangement, all right, uh, to make more money, right? Yeah, that's what it means, okay? So, now, you will agree with me that um, that can happen either as individuals okay, or as uh, entities. I mean, registered organizations, okay? Now, what I'm saying is, you can have entities that are already in business organizations or business activities, or individuals that are already in, you know, some other activities come together. It could be two, it could be more, okay? To uh, quickly carry out, um, you know, a business opportunity within uh, a defined period of time. Okay, so what, what I'm saying here is that um, uh, it's not like that is the core activity of the business, but because opportunity is presenting itself, you know, you might want to combine resources as separate entities or separate individuals, okay, to uh, invest in such an opportunity for that defined period of time. Okay, so let's call it accounting for a temporal business world arrangement. Okay, now, um, of course, uh, it can, it can, it can, you know, uh, happen in various perspectives. Okay, you can have the two guys or the three guys or the two entities. I mean, companies now, uh, or three entities, depending on the entities involved, or individuals involved, or agreeing to be involved in the world joint venture arrangement. Of course, that's the name they call it. Okay, agreeing to be involved in the in the you know uh, the temporal business arrangement. All right, so it is possible that these two individuals can combine their resources, okay, you know, to uh, jointly identify a product, identify what a product, okay, manufacture it or purchase it and then sell it. So, you know, Let's say A and what B, okay? They'll combine their what their resources to do what to identify a particular product or a particular service, okay? They'll jointly source for it and then jointly sell it. So what it means that A and B are coming together to carry out a particular what operation. So that means we can refer to this as what we call joint venture operations okay so a and b are combining their assets or combining their resources okay to identify a product manufacture or purchase it and then what sell it we call it joint venture what 
operations, then it is also possible that the opportunity presenting itself is not in the area of what operations per se, but in the area of what acquisition of what assets. Okay, so you can also refer to this as what jointly controlled operation. So A and B are controlling the operations of what the venture together. Then the next one can be A and B identifying or acquiring a particular asset or group of assets that will be used okay uh, to utilize or to achieve uh, <clears throat> certain objectives in the world in the joint venture okay so it's possible that maybe a particular of machinery is required so uh, a and b would jointly acquire that particular what machinery so it means that what they are jointly controlling the asset so you can have joint venture or let's say jointly controlled what assets what i'm saying is that in this case now a and b are what pulling what finances together or pulling resources together to acquire a particular type of what asset or group of what assets to be utilized in the joint venture what activity so you call that asset jointly controlled because A and B are what having what significant what interest in that what asset. Now sometimes it is possible that the opportunity that is presenting itself is in the area of what establishing another entity to carry out the joint venture what activity. So in that case, it means that A and B will pull resources together to what? To own and what? Control a new entity or another entity. Another what? Entity. What I'm saying is that, you know, in this case, it's based on the operations. They are putting those together, what? To get a particular product and then sell. But in this case now, they are putting those together to get a particular asset that will be utilized for the what? Joint venture arrangement. But in this case now, they are putting those together to what? Either establish an entity or own an entity that will be jointly controlled by both of them for the purpose of the word joint venture arrangement. Okay? So in this case now, we refer to it as what jointly controlled or jointly owned entity. So you can have joint venture come in the area of what? Operations. In the area of what asset or in the area of what entity so they can jointly control the operations they can jointly control asset they can jointly control what an entity okay so now the idea here is that you have to understand okay that the entities involved are trying to what have interest based on either operations assets or entity okay now, how do you account for it? Of course, accounting for joint venture arrangement depends on the nature of the joint venture. So, in order not to waste our time, I advise you to look at um, what the board is what recommending in the area of what um, joint venture accounting. So, you might have to uh, look at um, international. Accounting Standard 31, what I call IAS 31. Okay, this recommendation is on what? Joint venture. Okay, so you might have to look at IAS 31. And then, of course, in accounting, it's only called uh, proportional consolidation. Okay. Of course, there's something called us talking about the methods of account, and like I said, it depends on the nature. So you might be looking at proportional consolidation. I'm looking at what? Equity method. 
we will be looking at separate financial statements. Okay? So, in order not to waste our time, we should refer to what uh, IS31. But then, in order not to, okay, uh, you know, uh, make it a little more complicated, let's just understand that in joint venture, what you're trying to do basically is to identify the commitment of a part, each party. So the question is, how much have I invested? What turnover, what sales am I responsible for? And then what is the profit that I'm actually holding from my own commitment and from my own sales? And then what is the share of the profit that I'm keeping? So what I'm saying is that, of course, you have, um, you know, a way of keeping them, that's keeping the records in form of what? Individual uh, venturers, that's what you call them. That's A is a venturer, B is a venturer. So individual venturers can keep their books, and then at the end of the come together and prepare what? The combined account, they will identify the profit that is being made, and then they share it among them what? Sales. So, first and foremost, you must identify each venturer's commitment. Venturer A, what is Venturer A's commitment? What is Venturer A's cost? And then, what is the sales made by Venturer A? So, at the end of the day, the sales made by Venturer A compared to the cost incurred by Venturer A will tell you the profit or loss that Venturer A is responsible for. Now, out of the profit or loss that Venturer A is responsible for, what is the percentage that Ventura A is going to want to keep? So if Ventura A, for instance, you know, committed less than one million, okay, in the area of cost, and then the area of sales, he was responsible for let's say two million. So that means the profit that is in his care is one million. Now out of that one million, what percentage is he keeping? So if he's keeping 40%, it means that the remaining 60% should be sent to what? Venture B. So in Venture B's book as well, he will also keep record of what turnover that he is responsible for, cost that he has incurred. At the end of the day, you have a profit that is also what? In care of. So at the end, the profit that he, okay, is holding will be the same thing with the percentage that Venture A is to what? Is to send. So most likely, if Ventura A is having excess profit, then Ventura B will be having a deficit that is expecting to receive from Ventura A. That's the control. So it means at the end of the day, you see that the books should align with themselves. So if you want to not get a combined position, you can prepare the combined or joint venture account, or what they call the com a memorandum joint venture account, where you're going to have a, what, a combined position of what both what venturers okay so basically uh, this is uh, a, a brief background of what of uh, uh, the joint venture okay uh, accounting but don't forget that you should also you know refer to what is that to one to get to understand the recommendations of what the international accounting standard uh, that is what the board is recommending in IS what 31 regarding what accounting for what for joint venture. But then you know the basics remains that you have to be able to identify each venturer's commitment and the income, and then identify the profit or loss that each venturer is responsible for, and identify the percentage that each venturer is keeping. So at the end of the day, you must know if venturer A is what settling venturer B or venturer A is expecting payment from venturer what. B. So that ends it. And don't forget that joint venture does not mean that venturers cannot have their what, separate business. So it means that venturers can have their separate business and then come together to what, carry out a particular business over a defined period of what time. So if I have a company and then my friend has another company and then there's an opportunity, we can come together to what, take that opportunity under what, a temporary business arrangement called joint venture. Okay, and then another day, whatever profit is made from that joint venture can be accounted for as part of what my business profit. Of course, if my business is the one sponsoring it, and then if there's a loss, of course, my business has to also what 
you know, accommodate that. Okay? So we're moving to identify the profit or loss made from a particular word. Joint venture arrangement. I will now be recognized as part of what profit or loss made by the entity, okay, in the combined position from perspectives. So this is just a background. If you have questions, you can reach me on the numbers displayed. I'm there to reply you to the right answers. Don't forget, we have, we already have a class on joint venture accounting, okay, on Jaros Consulting. So you can take that class, okay, and then combine it with this class to have, you know, uh, a better word, position of what uh, we are talking about. Thank you. Okay, let's quickly take this question and then so we can have a basic understanding of what we're talking about. So we have the following transactions were extracted from the activities of CZ Limited for the month of March 2020. So I think there's a trial balance there. Uh, total admin expense is 10 million five hundred thousand or 10 five. Then we have 100,000 shares at 50 cobo, it has 50,000 bank sales, accumulated depreciation, vendors, receivables. And then we have uh, what's there? Uh, purchases, non current assets. And that's it. Then we have additional information. The business entered into a joint venture agreement with Kinetics Limited to supply energy shoes. Okay, CZ Limited to issue an open check of 10.5 million. Okay, uh, oh, sorry, 10 million rather. Uh, 10 million to purchase um, uh, a truck full of 1,000 packs. Okay, CZ Limited to pay for delivery and logistics worth 5% of the purchase cost for shipment to a warehouse owned, okay, by uh, Kinetics Limited. And then we have uh, Kinetics sold 980 packs at 15,000 naira per pack and incurred sales and distribution expense of 500 naira per pack. For Kinetics is to take over on sold units at cost of purchase. Then five, Kinetics is entitled to a profit of 30%. They will now have depreciation charged by CZ Limited for the month is 150,000 naira. You are required to prepare an income statement for the month. Of course, <coughs> this question, uh, okay, I, I see something like, I see more proportional consolidation there, okay, in basic form. So, uh, what am I seeing there? And I can see that um, uh, CZ Limited has a business on its own, but there was an opportunity to what um, sell energy shoes. So uh, CZ Limited entered into a joint venture arrangement with um, Kinetics, okay, Limited. So they were into that arrangement to what uh, identify or buy and sell energy shoes. So we have um, joint venture or jointly controlled operations there, okay, jointly controlled operations. So what we have there, and then uh, we can quickly prepare, of course, the income statement is for uh, CZ Limited, but CZ Limited had a joint venture arrangement. So, of course, aside from the business that it does, it was an opportunity for what energy shoes, which he actually took advantage of with uh, another company called Kinetics Limited. So, what we're trying to do here is to prepare the income statement for CZ Limited, but we have to also take account of uh, the what uh, profit or loss made from the word joint venture word arrangement proportionally. Okay, so let's quickly, you know, uh, look at that straightforward illustration and then move on. Okay, don't forget you can support the board. Um, Online classes by paying to the accounts displayed or sponsored copies of my textbook that will be distributed to students for free. So let's quickly, you know, do what we have to do. So first and first, we have C Z Limited, right? So that means. We're preparing accounts in the book of CZ Limited. Okay, so what happens? So first and foremost, let's find a way to account for the joint venture arrangement, so we can understand uh, the business. Okay, so of course we can say uh, joint venture with 
high matrix. Okay. So first and first, what are the costs incurred by kinetics by CZ? What are the costs incurred by CZ? You have to identify that, right? So what are the costs? They said CZ limited issued an open check of 10 million to purchase truck full of 1,000 packs of what energy shoes, I guess. So of course, you see this isn't a check. That means money is going out of the bank, right? Of course, the tribunals given to us there will tell you, babe, because this that means they've not even taken this into consideration. So that means we have what bank the guy issued what 10 million, right? And then what else? CZ Limited to pay delivery and logistics worth 5% of the purchase cost. So we have 5 over 100 times 10 million. Zero, 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 zero. So this is 5 times 100. What do you have? That's um, 500. That's 500,000, right? So we have um, logistics. 500,000. That is what the guy paid for. And then what do we have? CZ Limited to pay for delivery. And of course, we're taking that. Kinetics sold 90 packs. Okay, what else? Kinetics take over and sold that cost of purchase. Kinetics intended to profit to 10%. So, so CZ did not even sell anything. He only what? Incurred the cost and then sent it to what? Kinetics to what? Sell and then share profit. Okay? So now the next thing is. What is what? CZ's share of what? Profit. Right? What is his share of profit? Do we even know? We don't know. So, the next thing we we'll do there is what? To prepare what you call what? A combined eh, joint venture account. Okay, so you can call, you don't call it combined, you can call it memorandum joint venture account. Okay, so let's go. So, what are the expenses incurred? Of course, there was what purchases of how much? 10 million. Then there was logistics paid by what? CZ, how much? 500 right then what else what else what else what else uh, distribution expense so we have distribution they said uh, the distribution expense there is 500 naira per pack so how many pack was sold 980 so 980 times 500 what do you have That's 490,000. So we have 490. What's the next thing there? There's no other thing there. There's no other thing there. Sales. We have sales. What's the sales there? 90 packs of the suit. So we have 980 times 15,000. So what do you have? We have 980 times 15,000. I can see uh, 14 million 700,000. 14 million 700,000. So we can call it 14,700. Okay. And there was the next thing there. They said what? Can I talk about on sold unit at cost of purchase? So that means if he's taking it over, then it was sold to himself. So there's another sales. So we have 1,000 units. 90 was, so how many remaining? 20, 20 units unsold, right? So the, what is cost of one unit? Of course, we purchase 10 million, 1,000 units at 10,000, at 10, 10 million. So how much would be one unit? So if we have 10 million, okay, purchasing what? 1,000 units. 
So how much is one unit? So one unit will be what? 10 million, right? Divide by what? 1,000. So what do we have there? 10,000 per unit. So how many units we have sold? 20. 20 times 10,000. What do we have there? Okay, that be what um, put zero here. That gives you what uh, hundred thousand. Hundred thousand times two. That's two hundred thousand. Right. So that means this guy has another two hundred thousand in his case. So basically, we've sold all the units. We've incurred these purchases. So the difference will be the what? The profit, right? So if we want to share profit now, share of profit. So we have. The first guy is CZ, second guy is what? Kinetics. And then the, the question says that what? Kinetics is to what? 30% of the profit. So what's the profit? So basically we have uh, what? Uh, what do I have? 14,700, right? Plus 200. Plus 200. That's 14. 900 so 14900 minus total costs as minus what 10 minus 500 minus 490 this is uh, 3910 so 3910 times 0 0.3 that's for kinetics 3910 times 0 0.7 that's for cc right so this times 0 0.3 we have k is 1173 right so we have 3910 times 0 0.7 that's cz is what 2737 so if you add everything up now everything will agree everything will be 14900 14900 so it means that what? Um, kinetics that sold the product <coughs> is to send what? 2737, seven, right? To who now? To, um, what was his name? Uh, to CZ Limited, right? So now this guy has what incurred this cost so what was the sales made are you there what was the sales made now did he make any sales did he make any sales he did not make any sales but rather what did he do he actually what incurred this he incurred what this now what is his share of profit his share of profit is what 2737. So his share of profit was 2737. Right? His share of profit is 2737. So if you add this plus this plus this, that is what he is expecting from Kinetics Limited. So we'll add up. So what do you have? 2737 plus 10,000. Plus five hundred three thirteen two three seven. So we have what? Uh, check from who now? Check from kinetics. That will be what? Thirteen two three seven. So we have thirteen two three seven. Thirteen two three seven. So this is in the book of what? CZ Limited. So in CZ Limited's book, the joint venture arrangement, okay, he made, he should a check of what? 10 million, paid for the registry, 500,000. And his share of the profit from the joint venture is what? 2737. So at the end, this guy that, is, that sold the product will send him a check of 13237 to cover the cost of purchase cover the cost of his logistics and also cover his share of what? Profit. Okay? So this is in the book of CZ Limited. So if you are preparing in the book of Kinetics Limited, we also prepare, you know, his joint venture with CZ Limited. 
you prepare the combined joint venture and then know the money that he is supposed to send towards uh, Kinetic. So in CZ's limited, sorry, to CZ, in CZ's limited book, he is expecting a check from Kinetics. In Kinetics limited book, okay, he will be what? His book will be showing that he is to send a check of 13237 towards CZ limited so you can take that class on joint venture account on Jarvis consulting to understand because in there we did it from both perspectives so you will understand what i'm talking about in this practical class now we're doing it from one perspective so we are on we are acting as an accountant for one of the venturers so in this class now in this practical class we are acting as an accountant on behalf of what cz limited okay so from the perspective of what connect is his accountant will also be there you know, taking record okay so he will also prepare an account you know in joint venture with CZ limited we also prepare combined JV to know what he is to send to what CZ limited so as an accountant of CZ limited you're expecting a check from 13 of 13237 from kinetics so the accountant of kinetics will be what communicating with you you guys will do he, you have done your own combined JV he will do his to ensure that you are carrying the same words value so since you are expecting this he is to give what the same word value so you prepare the account from the perspective of what of kinetics and from the perspective of what cz limited but in this class scenario we are preparing from the perspective of what cz limited so we want to know i uh, want to report the profit made from the joint venture arrangement okay for what a consolidation into what the uh, profit the income statement of CZ Limited, you know, as what as an entity. Okay, so proportionally we're trying to show what the joint venture brought in as profit, and then we're going to combine it in uh, the income statement of what uh, of the business. Okay, as what a combined what entity. So basically, we've seen that this guy here made all this what expense, and then we're expecting this what. So now remember that he should a check, so it will also affect his bank. You know, he should a check. So with this now, we should know what went outside the bank account and what is expected to come in again. So from this now, we can just do this. So we have the bank account now. Of course, if you look at the bank account in the question, okay, what's the bank account in the question? What's the bank account in the question? Question is showing bank of 60,000. So we have, okay, we have a balance brought for, right? Let's just see balance brought for. How much? 60,000. So out of this, he issued a check, right? So let's call it uh, kinetics, right? He gave him 10,000. Now he also gave him 500. Kinetics again, collected 500, right? Now, when they finish the business, Kinetics is to send him a check of what? 13237, right? So we now have what? Uh, kinetics bringing in what? 13237. But don't forget that in this 13237, is covering what? The cost of purchase and logistics. At the same time, there's a profit element here, right? So you must understand that. So let's balance up. So we have balance carried down now. 13237 plus 60,000. So what do we have? 73,237. So minus, minus what? Uh, 10,500, right? So we have 62737. So we have 62737. So the new balance will be 62737. And don't forget, we have income from joint venture. So this money that came in, you know, we gave out 10,500. 10, so, but when we got the check now, we got 13,237. That means this check now is covering this 10,000 10, coming back, then covering the what? The profit made from the joint, which is 2737. So, we're going to have, uh, uh, should I call it kinetics or let's say bank? How much is going in there now? 2737. Seven. Okay, so basically here, you can agree with me that we issued a check of 10, 
500 and then we now got the check of 13237. So what would have happened? That means we made a profit of what? 2737. So from this now we can do, let's extract the extended trial balance. So we have extended what? Trial balance, right? So what is the trial balance there? Okay. So we've done the joint venture account. So now we want to we want to put it into the business. So let's show the combined position. Now we have total admin expense. So we have what? Admin expense. Admin expense there is what? 10,500. So we have 10,500. We have share capital. Share capital is what? 50,000. So what's the next one? Bank now, bank bank has changed because of the new transaction. So the new bank is six two seven three seven. So we have six two seven three seven. What's the next one? Sales. Our sales here is what ninety thousand. So we have ninety thousand. What's the next one? Accumulated depreciation. Right. So we have accumulated depreciation. That would be what? 10,000, right? But remember, there's already a depreciation for the month there, which is how much? 150,000. So that would be what? 10,150. Right? So we have the next one there. What's the next one? Vendors. So we have vendors. Vendors there is 12,500. 12,500. What's the next one there? Receivables, that's like objectors. What's receivables there? 7,500. So what's the next one there? Purchases. Purchases there is 29,500. What's the next one? Non-current asset. Non-current asset. What do we have? 55,000. So what's the new thing that came in? We have depreciation there, okay, 150, and then we have income from what? Joint venture, 2737, 2737, okay? So let's agree the trial balance. What do you have? Let's agree the trial balance. What do you have there? So let's go. Let's do the uh, debit side. So we have... Uh, 10,500 plus what 62737 plus 7,500 plus 29,500 plus 55,000 plus 150. Over again, 165387. So the next one that we have 50,000 plus 90,000 plus 10,150 plus 12,500. We have uh, plus 2737. So we have 165387. So you can see that the new trial balance or the revised trial balance has agreed. You know, after taking out, uh, after taking into consideration proportionally the profit made from the word joint venture. So from this now, we can prepare our what? Our income statement. So you see, let's prepare the income statement. Okay, let's go. So we have a income what statement. Okay. For the month of what? What's the month? Is it March? What do we have there? March 2020. Month of what? March 2020. So let's go. So we have our notes here. So notes one, that'll be our turnover, right? So let's call our notes one. So let's do our notes one here. Notes one. So what are our notes one? Turnover. What's turnover here? Sales. Sales is 90,000. So we have sales. Okay, to be what? 90,000. So that's the market. 
we have 90,000. So, next one we have cost of sales. Let's call that note 2. So, what are note 2 here? Okay. I think the only thing I can see here is purchases. So, we have purchases to be how much? 29,500. So, we have 29,500. So, we take that out. What do we have? Ninety thousand <coughs> minus twenty nine five hundred. So we have sixty five hundred. So this is your gross profit. So the next one is there any other income? Yes. So our other income here will be note three. So let's do our note three here. So what are note three? And that's the income from joint venture. So what do we have? 2737. 2737. So we have 2737. So let's add up. Plus 2737. So what do I have? 63237. So this is your what? Your gross income. Then the next one will say total what expense so let's call that note four so let's put that here note four so what's the total expense? we have admin expense here what's the admin expense ten thousand five hundred then other expense here depreciation what do we have 150 so everything is how much 10,500 plus 150. We have 10,650. So we have 10,650. So if we take this out, what do you have? 63237. Okay. Minus what? 10,000. So we have. Uh, Two five eight seven. So this is the profit or loss for the month. Of course, profit is the difference between your income and your what expense. So it's a loss where your expense is more than your what your income. Okay. So this is. Oh, excuse me. We have seventy three two three seven. So here to here should be seventy three. 73237. Three, okay, but the balance is okay. All right, so this is the position, okay, okay, uh, of the business after taking into consideration the income from the jointly controlled operation. So, you know, here yeah, we're able to see that since Limited has a business, okay, but then went into a joint venture arrangement with uh, Kinetics, okay, so we're able to, you know, account for. Uh, the joint operations from the perspective of CZ Limited, then we were able to you know identify uh, or account for the profit from the joint venture and then incorporated it into the uh, trial balance that's like a combined or consolidated position proportionally and then reported the word income statement. Okay, you know to also account for the joint venture arrangement. So uh, this is the position. You can attempt the word income uh, the statement of financial position as the balance sheet on your own. Okay, and don't forget that you can as well uh, reach me for questions and clarifications. I'll be to reply with the answer. And then I said that you should also endeavor to look at the recommendation of what of the board on joint venture, which is what IAS 31. Okay, uh, so that is it uh, for you know uh, the class on uh, on uh, joint venture. Okay, and then if you have questions, you can reach me. On the numbers and don't forget that we already we have a class proper on joint venture which you can actually uh take on jadusconsulting.com it's free okay that will also help you to have what understanding because there we looked at both perspectives okay from the uh, point of view of all venturers here we're looking at the point of view of one of the venturers okay so uh that will also help uh
I'm expecting your support as well, okay, uh, by paying the account displayed or by paying for copies of my textbook that we're going to uh, distribute to students for free. Okay, you can reach me on the number displayed for clarifications and uh, to let us know how you can be of help to us. Thank you.